Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to this first episode on SAP Analytics Cloud Training with me Anubhav. Thank you so much for choosing this course on SAP Analytics Cloud. In today's episode, we will look at introduction of basic stuff with SAP Analytics Cloud. We will try to understand all the terminologies which we will be using throughout this course in a single session as I promise some of you coming from non technical background even some of you are joining from zero knowledge on SAP world. Don't worry we will cover everything in this course so that you'll be able to become an expert on SAP analytics cloud. Before we start today's class. Let us go ahead and first look at our training block. This is the place where you are going to go through all the video recordings of the sessions. Yeah, so that's our training block we will be using. So let me switch it over to the training block quickly. I'm sure you all would have got an email from my team about the training block for SAP Analytics Cloud. Let me just also open that up for you. So the training block will be the single source of truth for all the information which you need about our training. All right, just give me a moment. Let me start that. And I will also again reshare my screen with you. Yes. So this is our training block. As you all can see, this is where you're going to get the video of every single class. So just in case you miss any class, you can go back and watch the video of the class over here. So remember video recording will be available be after three o'clock 3 p.m. which is after the class is completed. It takes minimum six hours to make the video recording available to you because we do convert them to an HD format and this HD format will be um, available to you over Amazon cloud services. Hence it takes time. So please note here is where you're going to get the video over after the class. So class schedule will be available here in the schedule section. If there is any by chance cancellation of any class, you will always get to know over here in the class schedule. So you can see all our classes are scheduled over the weekends morning seven o'clock India time. You can accordingly check your time zone for the classes. So that's our training block which we will be using throughout to be able to do practice and learn it. Yeah. Now, of course, when it comes to server access, I'm going to also talk about how to get access of SAP Analytics Cloud instance. So you're going to get also the instance of SAP Analytics Cloud Server, which is free. And all of this I'm going to discuss in our uh, coming days and coming classes. All right. So that's something we will we will also discuss soon on the coming days and coming classes. So allow me some time. We will also be able to build this kind of screens as you can see my my screen this kind of dashboards we will be learning how to build them how to apply filtering blending modeling all of this is will be covered in detail including the terminologies so let's get started today's class our main focus will be to understand the basics of sap today what is basics of sap because many of you come from non sap background or even may not have a complete fair idea so it's important that all of us have same terminologies understanding you can also put uh, your questions in the chat window during the class and i will pick them up as and when i give a logical close to a talking topic at the end of the class we will also have a question answer round where you can unmute your line and then you will also be able to ask the questions at very end of the session all right so in the demo session we talked about steve what is steve does um, so there's just a quick recap of the demo so he's steve Steve is working as an IT consultant in a company. His main challenge is us to bring to the data at a central place and build dashboard and analytics on top of that data by doing data blending and data wrangling. And then this dashboard should be presented to the CEO or the CIO of the company. So Steve has two choices. Steve can go with an on-premise solution where they, their company has to install this software in the hardware. They need to purchase the expensive hardware to install this software. They need to also 
invest in networking and security as well as consultants who will manage these uh, these servers then on the other side steve can also go with the cloud based solution where there is no installation required in this in their company entire infrastructure to be able to manage such a solution and software is done by sap directly or the solution provider and steve company will be paying um, a subscription fee on a monthly basis and usage basis to that sub, uh, to that vendor so in the on premise world it is a licensing fee which they pay lump sum for 20 year 10 year they will own the hardware they will own everything but in cloud they will not own any hardware they will just use as they go it's pay per use so that that's what uh, steve's will go for a choice so sap analytics cloud will help me help me as steve so you can see it is a software as a service connecting your people data and ideas from uh, multiple sources to enable fast and confident decision making so that's mainly sap analytics cloud definition by the book now it allows user to discover visualize plan and predict all at one place so this is how steve will now be able to use and collaborate with his ceo and build this dashboard of course uh, this is just in a nutshell what an on-premise and a cloud solution and a sap analytics cloud is actually a cloud native solution we're going to talk about that more in detail and we also discussed about what are all the courses and who are all can join this course and what is that we saw in the demo session with this dashboard we created step by step in the demo session so thanks for uh, signing up for this course and today's class we will just start with introduction introduction of these basic terminologies so all of us who come from different different background should actually have same understanding that's very very important we all must have same understanding so that we can actually um, be able to do things uh, in, a, in a better manner right so that's what exactly we wanted to achieve so let's start with same understanding what is an on-premise and what is a cloud the very first question of this class what is the difference between an on-premise software and a cloud software so let me start what is an on-premise an on-premise software requires following so if you imagine you wanted to implement an on-premise software in your company your company has lots of departments finance marketing sales hr how do you start with implementing a software in your company department so option one is on premise which is a classical way which is what has been very popular since 1990s till 2010 or 2012 this was very popular so an on premise software requires following the first thing which is requires is hardware to be purchased networking to be set up license needs to be bought by paying lump sum you need to hire professionals to maintain the system and health of the solution then what else it's expensive initial investment is very high scalability is difficult to achieve right so these are all some of the re things which you when you look at an on-premise software on-premise means premise means your own home yeah your infrastructure your own home so a software which you install in your own company now to install this software you need hardware you need computers you need operating systems you need networking you need licensing so what you do is you pay let's say for 20 year license you say okay you take this much amount this is 20 year licensing fees and license keeps get renewed on timely basis you need to hire professionals you need to hire people who manage these installation who manage these software like in sap world if you look at 
SAP basis consultants what they do their job is to maintain health of the system manage users in the system manage system performance system setting keep the system installation ready upgrade the system on timely basis all of this is your responsibility you need to hire people upgrade and new release new patches is the customer's responsibility to apply is on customer so as a customer i need to do upgrade and new patches initial investment is very high because you are buying hardware suppose i have i want to implement an sap software sap software cannot be just installed in a simple microsoft your personal laptop it cannot be it needs dedicated linux servers with humongous amount of memory minimum let's say one tera one petabytes or 100 gigabytes of memory you need so you need to buy such an expensive hardware and hardware also you need to buy only from certified vendors you can't buy from anyone so initial investment is very high scalability suppose today my company is having 500 employees tomorrow my business grows and i grow from 500 to 5000 employees now to achieve the scalability i need to buy more and more and more hardware i need to go and buy more licenses hence the scalability is costly and it is also going to take time i can't scale the system so easily i need more networking more people so scalability is difficult to achieve when it comes to on premise software now what is the advantage since the initial investment is high if you are sure that you're going to use it for years and years the same solution then you can say my cost is relatively going to or the return is going to come out over a period of time okay the data remains within my company data never goes out but that's not the case these days because most of the people would want to use your data consume your data at least some amount of data on the mobile so then you have to also build lot of other things on top of on premise to expose the data on the internet that's again becomes a challenge for on premise system so this is what an on premise software looks like now let's look at what is a cloud based solution or called cloud solution now let me take an example of on premise solution uh, it will be more clear if you had heard about sap ecc what is sap ecc it's a on premise solution what is microsoft outlook it's an on premise solution you need to install in your computer you need to install your in your computer microsoft office it's an on premise uh, solution you need you need to have your own laptop there you buy a license from microsoft and install sap bw on premise solution sap bob j business objects on premise solution sap bi on premise solution so till today majority of sap solutions were on premise on premise okay now coming to cloud solution so on premise suitable for large corporations large corporations they have a big it budget they can afford it they can go for it cloud solution what is a cloud solution in the cloud solution you consume the software as a service also known as software as a service saas so you don't have to no installation required in your company yes now guys since there is no installation required for the software in your company then you don't need to buy hardware you don't need to hire any security personnel and networking resource complete software is managed by vendor including upgrades yeah so since the software is managed by vendor vendor only will take care of upgrades vendor only will take care of quality vendor only will take care of 
security networking operating system hardware everything is a duty of vendor so how do you pay on what basis will you pay here you were paying based on licensing fee you were buying a license but how do you pay in cloud you will pay per use or pay per user these are all the two different models you have in the cloud pay per use means how much is your usage so you when you whenever a project is started you will decide okay i need maybe 100 gigs of memory i need this processing power so based on that and i will be you paying monthly basis weekly basis you can decide on your plan paying plan okay now pay per user is i'll say i don't want to know ki how much is the is the exactly pay per month i want to know fix i have my 20 users in my company and based on that i wanted to go ahead and use the software so for 20 users you tell me fix price how much you charge per month so that is pay per use or pay per user so what is an example of cloud gmail of course gmail is a free software as a service do you need to install G gmail in your local machine anyone can you please answer in chat window everyone do you need to install gmail in your local machine does it require to be installed in your local machine no 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 right so you don't need to install gmail in your local machine that's the benefit of gmail correct that's a benefit so gmail is a software as a service now there are other cloud products coming in the market now sap themselves have come with a new solution called sap s4 hana which is sap's new erp this is also available in cloud which means if your company want to implement erp and you wanted to use that then you don't need to install anything now the biggest advantage of cloud is it's low tco low total cost of ownership initial investment is very low okay you don't have to invest a lot of money initially upgrades and all these things will be managed by system and it's a fast adoption and faster innovation you don't have to wait for let's say months and months for upgrades and and new release you will get quarterly release cycle these days or some of the companies are having daily release cycle or monthly release cycle for their new version of the software so you don't have to wait for long time okay don't have to wait for long time sap s4 hana for your information let me tell you also available as a on premise solution as well and it's also available as a as sap s4 hana cloud solution now similarly what is an alternate of this bob j bi what is an alternate solution of sap bob j bi lumira these are all some of the software you might have heard about or worked on what is the alternate of their own premise solution in cloud it's sap analytics cloud so if you your company want to use a analytics solution where you can do the business intelligence you wanted to build dashboards and nice charts you wanted to don't invest initially on hardware you don't want to purchase any hardware setup buy or, or invest in people to set up things you can go with a cloud solution and that's where sap analytics cloud comes into picture as you can see cloud it's a software as a service available in cloud software as a service available in cloud which means you just open your browser start using it yes no installation no setup nothing required in your local machine you can access this completely on browser like gmail you open gmail and you access it for example let me show you here so this is my sap analytics cloud system as you can see and i'm able to work with this system over here without any installation i simply open my browser put a url and i'm able to work with the system is that clear everyone what is sap analytics cloud it's a software as a service which is an alternative of some of these on-premise solution now important is to also understand sap's strategy 
the strategy in terms what will happen to these own premise solutions will sap de discontinue these solutions or will sap remain these solutions active and parallelly maintain this and this it depends on customer choice which one they want to go some large corporations some customers some companies sap is a big ecosystem if you really see in in general there are about 3 lakh plus customers today sap has yeah 3 lakh customers and it has about 30000 partners it runs 65% of world GDP. Your top 500 companies or Fortune 500 companies, they all use SAP. So the scale is so big and we don't know which company would want which flavor. So cloud is one flavor, on-premise is another flavor. Depends on need and requirement. We will also understand in coming uh, discussion a strategy for SAP Analytics Cloud. What about this existing solution? What will happen to them? Will they remain? Will they discontinue? What is the strategy SAP showcasing when it comes to SAP Analytics Cloud? Now guys, in short, SAP Analytics Cloud, if you see, it is also known as SAC. So we call it as SAC. So whenever you see this word called SAC, SAP Analytics Cloud, it, they are referring SAP Analytics Cloud. So don't get confused with these jargons. They name it as SAC. Now, let's try and understand what does the cloud offers, okay? When it comes to cloud, what are all the offerings does the cloud has? So within the cloud, if you really, really look at anybody who's doing a cloud business, any software company uh, who is doing the cloud business, there are mainly three stacks which are available. The first stack is called infrastructure as a service, called infrastructure as a service. So in infrastructure as a service, what is happening actually, you are able to host a computer. Let's say today I want to do some research. I am doing research on coronavirus. Now today I have humongous coronavirus data which is there across the globe. I have pattern and patient pattern and it's like you know petabytes of data, 200 petabytes of data. Now I want to analyze this data. I want to first store this data somewhere. Now what do I need to store the data? I need hard disk, I need RAM, correct? Now, if I go and to the market and buy a RAM, buy a RAM. Now, RAM will cost me to store this uh, petabyte of data. If I want to store it in RAM, it will cost me, let's say, whopping five to six lakh of rupees for having such a RAM. Now, the coronavirus is just going to stay for, let's say, till December or for some time. It's not going to stay forever because medicine is going to come. So after december maybe that that hardware which i bought the ram i bought is of no use because there are no more cases after december so my initial investment to do analysis on coronavirus is so high i have to go and spend millions of dollars to buy that expensive hardware now what other ways i have i can go to a cloud infrastructure as a service provider and i can say hey dude can you give me a computer with 20 petabyte of RAM and you give me it on rental basis. So it's actually renting out a computer on the internet. You go, you say, okay, you take, let's say $500 a month. You, they already have large amount of infrastructure with them. So these infrastructure providers, they already invested heavily. They already invested billions of dollars to set up expensive computers and these computers are available for you on sharing basis you pay per use or pay per month you say i will pay just 500 dollars and that way in a course of next six months you'll just end up paying like three thousand or three uh, thirty thousand dollars whereas if you would want to invest in hardware your own hardware you would have end up spending a million dollar so which is better infrastructure as a service is better right so now in this situation where you are not sure how long you're going to retain the system or you wanted to just immediately start using it rather than procuring the hardware sometimes the hardware is not available in the market you go to the market to purchase let's say buy a, such expensive ram 
it says if we're gonna import it for some time it's gonna take six months or five months by the time your, your maybe use case has changed so industry is changing very fast so you go with the infrastructure provider you ask them give me a computer on the internet to use which is having this much gigabytes of ram this much gigabytes of processing power and this much gigahertz of uh, the hard disk speed so that is what called infrastructure as a service in the cloud now who are all providing these computers to us so in the market there is amazon you might have heard about aws they provide us computers then we have microsoft azure amazon microsoft azure so these are all the companies who are providing and google yeah google also provide infrastructure now it's called google google infrastructure so they provide us expensive computers you go to them you ask them hey can you give me a computer they will give it to you you pay them for the computer they will give it to you an online computer where you can work with this just to show you just to show you if you go to aws.amazon.com you will get more fair idea you can see here pricing plan and you see aws tire so they also offer free tire for a trial purpose and you see this instance it gets with an operating system yeah and in this you can choose how much gigabyte of memory you need yeah how much gigabyte of memory you need so you can actually go and choose the plan depending on your need depending on your need so you don't have to invest heavily on a computer yourself you can hire a computer or you can basically rent out a computer on the internet okay and they have different pricing plans depending on the size you want depending on the computer computing power you want they can offer you so that's option that's one offering which is there today in the cloud called infrastructure as a service okay now second on top of it comes as platform as a service what is platform as a service so today you got a computer now can you use that computer right away can you start building your application can you write a c program on that computer can you store data in that computer in a in a more organized way you cannot you just got a hardware with a basic operating system installed but you can't still use that computer it's not possible what you need on top of this is a platform as a service so platform as a service allows you to install support for programming so on top of it you need a couple of programming support programming language you need databases you need scaling you need queuing feature you need dispatchers you need web proxies so you need lots of stuff to be able to build a software on this computer which you got on internet so a platform as a service allows you all the programming support you need it includes everything programming languages different languages like java node.js hana databases databases like hana mysql postgresql scalability queuing like rabbit mq for queuing your data for um, preparing your uh, number of requests which are coming for tracking all these support which you need so anyone ever started with programming language you need to install c compiler in your system you need to install database you need to install java all these installations which you need they are packaged together as a platform as a service so once you have a platform as a service you can actually install all the required services on top of infrastructure to start building applications so that's called platform as a service there are a lot of companies in this yeah, there is something called ESO2 not a popular name and then we have ocean cloud which is a very popular name we have cloud 9 then we have SAP cloud platform so in our context we have SAP cloud platform so what is SAP cloud platform look at this name cloud platform platform look at this word platform so here you also see platform so what is SAP cloud platform it's a platform as a service provided by SAP 
where you get all the support for yourself to be able to work with the uh, to be able to build an application now let me also show you that so where do you go and check cloud platform dot sap dot com if you go there cloud platform dot sap dot com you will see this is how it looks and in cloud platform this is how you will get you can also register a free trial here so maybe in some time towards the end of this course we will also be using some features of cloud platform so i would also recommend you you can also go ahead and register here on cloudplatform.sap.com for a free trial you can do that so now if you come inside cloud platform you will see here lots of free services provided by sap it's a trial so you get a lot of free services if i go inside services my cloud platform and we just go inside you will see inside this so many services will be there inside of this which they offer so i'm creating just quickly an account so if you come to the capabilities of sap cloud platform you can see here you will find all the services and capabilities they offer so let me just come and here you will see all the services they offer all the products you see platform availability regions infrastructure environments different languages they support accessibility integration so sap cloud platform is a bunch of platform as a service which offers you lots of capabilities it offers you all the support you need to get started with the development of your software in the cloud so everything is pre-installed pre-configured you simply start with sap cloud platform and you're gonna get everything out of the box everything out of the box let me just quickly go back and see if it has started my cloud platform so i'm gonna go log on to my trial it's still creating so you can always go and check here so in this case actually sap is offering two types of platform as a service within this and if you see this one is called neo and there's one more called cloud foundry so you see these are all the services you have see data quality java app service identity uh, html5 app service identity provisioning service key store service for storing passwords java debugging service monitoring service uh, authentication service you know sap translation service web id service for development of fury application hana is a service for database storage so they are offering all these services on the internet for you so sap cloud platform is available in two flavors one is called neo and another is called cloud foundry okay one is called neo and one is called cloud foundry what is the difference so neo means this infrastructure which you see in case of neo this infrastructure is owned by sap but when you use sap cloud platform cloud foundry flavor in this infrastructure is owned by either aws microsoft azure and google so infrastructure option you have to choose from when you go with infrastructure when you go with the cloud foundry you can choose one of these infrastructures in the company okay cloud foundry has more features as compared to neo neo is available free for lifetime cloud foundry trial is available for 90 days but we will not be using cloud uh, sap cloud platform because this course is not a programming course this course is for anyone who willing to learn ui5 zero programming knowledge required to learn this course we're not going to use sap cloud platform actually to be able to build any programming okay we are not doing any programming so we have we will not do anything much in cloud platform okay but it's important to understand these layers these terminologies are very important and you whenever you hear what is sap cloud platform what is neo what is cf these things you need to understand the terminology so that's why i'm explaining now on top of it finally once developers so you as a developer you work with this if you are at all a developer in your company you work with this and then you build a software now that software which you had built it's actually a cloud native software 
which means that software can run on cloud anybody from anywhere any device anytime they can access over the internet it's a software on the cloud on the internet so that application which you create on top of this platform is called SaaS software as a service so the application which you build on top of this platform is called software as a service the application the final application which comes out is called application as a service this is the app we share with our end user and they can access over internet without any installation in their system now if i take an example of gmail gmail is what gmail is an application as a service which is built by google on google cloud platform okay gmail is a application as a service which is built by google on their google's cloud platform infrastructure is also google cloud platform also is google google also has their own cloud platform let me show you so here you see google cloud computing services they also offer you programming support they also offer you a platform where you can go and program and you can build applications on top of this google cloud platform so gmail is actually a software as a service which is built by google on their own platform that's why you don't install anything to use gmail you simply open gmail.com you are able to use the email application that's a software as a service now this is where i'll show you the example of software as a service as gmail and you see sap analytics cloud what is it this is also an application end user application so as a user you can start using it directly bye bye to those old ways where you need to wait for six months for installing an sap bob j system or sap bw system no more needed today right at this moment you can start with sap analytics cloud without buying any hardware simply get started simply get started with the software now how these cloud vendors reduce the implementation cost you remember i talked about implementation costs total cost of ownership how do they reduce the cost because the hardware is very expensive you need a hardware with so many gigabytes of memory now if if i just use this and give it to you then it is very expensive for me how amazon aws is making profit out of it in spite of giving you a gigs of memory of computer to use how are they making profit how is it profitable profitable for these companies what what do they do so that it's profitable so what they do is to reduce the cost that the cloud works on the infrastructure is and applications of course apps also are used on sharing basis why sharing basis sharing basis means i have one computer this computer has 600 gigabyte of memory but i have now six customer who don't want 600 who want 100 100 100 gigabyte so i am going to slice my system in six parts i will say this first 100 gb is for you second 100 gb is for you third 100 gb is for you so i will onboard six different customers on this single machine i will share it with everybody okay i will buy one system with 600 gigabyte ram six customer need 100 100 i can share this infrastructure with all of them because think about a rule of the game if you want a server i suppose i get a customer and one customer from america one customer from india now i got a, a request of let's say 200 gigabyte and i have one system with 200 gigabyte so when america is in morning india is in evening india is in morning america is in evening so i know indian guys are going to maximum use system during morning hours india time so american that time are sleeping and americans when they are using indians are sleeping so i can also manage that way my server 
by sharing basis that system load will also be less and I distribute my load between different regions. So there are multiple tactics and multiple ways by which they do sharing of same infrastructure with multiple people that way total cost of ownership is reduced. You all know that when we share things we save money, right? Like Uber pool when you do a Uber pool you save money rather than booking a cab from point A to point B for yourself alone you pay more but when you share when you pool you pay less so that's how they reduce the cost of implementation the their cost and they may maximize their profit and for customer also it's a win-win customers will not realize that the, the, this infrastructure is shared by somebody else they will work with their own 100 gigs of memory so then the question comes Anubha, how do they separate data then because the same system you are giving access how will they separate data so in database there is a concept called schema so when you are giving let's say a database i've got a database here of 100 gigabyte and two people need 50 50 so i can separate and break down my database into two schemas 150 gb 150 gb so that's something which we do typically in case of databases so similarly there are different scaling possibilities possible in a way that's something which we really don't care how that happens but understand it's basically pooling the same system is shared across multiple users and multiple use cases. So that's what brings me to the next point. This infrastructure is used on sharing basis and each customer who is sharing these resources is called tenant. Is it clear what is a tenant the definition of a tenant? So what is paying guest? Have you been into any PG guys PG or hostel in your life in your school days college days? Yes tenant. So when you go a PG what you do you not owning that house you are living there as a paying guest PG. So you are a tenant there you are just paying rent monthly basis and you are being a tenant similarly here in this world a customer who is sharing these these resources even it could be software as a service platform as a service or infrastructure anything they can share whenever they're sharing this their data is separated by means of multiple schemas they will be sharing this with others but others will not know that they are really sharing it because there is a there is a separate schema for each person and this customer who is sharing the resource who is actually your customer here is called tenant it's not called customer it's called tenant in case of on premise it's called on premise customer but in case of cloud a customer is named as tenant is this clear guys what is definition of tenant because many time you may hear this you may encounter this word don't confuse tenant is nothing but a customer who is sharing the cloud resources with others is called tenant. It's very important to understand these terminologies before we get in into this SAP Analytics Cloud because if you get in into it and if you don't understand these terminologies one day you will get confused. So that's why today's class is mainly focusing on all these theories to make you understand what is a tenant, what is an infrastructure as a service, what is a platform as a service. Yeah. Now so that's about what cloud offers and what is a tenant all about yeah this is called tenant now you also understood what is sap cloud platform so in let me write also definition for sap cloud platform if somebody asks you in interview what is sap cloud platform is a platform as a service which provides support for developing applications in the cloud so sap cloud platform is a platform as a service which provides support for developing it offers so many services like database as a service programming language as a service okay monitoring as a service you saw a lot of services it is it is available in two flavors first is neo sap cloud platform neo is where the sap owns the infrastructure as a service 
the second comes is sap cloud foundry cf where infrastructure is aws google or microsoft azure so this is what in a nutshell sap cloud platform is i hope you are clear guys the definition what is a tenant and what is an sap cloud platform now next thing what is a region or what is a data center or region now guys what happens is when you are hosting such a infrastructure or such a platform there are people who are going to use your services across the globe there are people who are going to use your services across the globe people sitting in india japan russia ukraine uh, us uk different countries so what they do is these cloud vendors suppose there is only one infrastructure server you have all the load will come to that single server will be dangerous yeah will be dangerous if that single server is down everybody will be down so what they also have is they have scalability and elasticity achieved using data centers so these cloud vendors to achieve scalability and elasticity they use or they have servers across globe now let me take you also one more example in europe there is a special law that law says if any company running any software in europe they must they must comply to gdpr general data privacy protection law it's a law passed by european union in 2018 so they are saying that any company who want to do business who want to use software their data should not leave european region their data must be in europe only they cannot have their data stored outside europe if you want to use any software we don't allow any european firm or company who is doing business in europe their data must be stored in europe only what will you do will you stop making softwares for europe no you will go and you will buy a machine in amazon cloud in europe region because amazon offers Uh, the services for their infrastructure in multiple region similarly sap also offers sap cloud platform services both neo and cloud foundry in different different regions so that's what called data center or region where the cloud vendors to achieve scalability elasticity and compliance they have servers across the globe in different different regions so that's called data center where your data is stored where your application is stored it's stored in a data center now this gives lot of advantage in case of let's say natural calamity suppose suddenly there is earthquake came in a one region all your data can be safeguarded from that region to another region to support customers second load balancing a european customer a european user of your mobile app will connect to nearest data center so that they get better response faster output because they are connecting to european data center not the india data center if a user connect like say i open my mobile app then it will automatically know that i am in india and it is going to connect to my india data center so that's what data center is actually does data center or region so when you are actually going with sap cloud platform or sap cloud platform also you will also see here there is something called region information so let me just quickly check that sap cloud platform region or data centers yeah if i go there you can go and see here all the data centers and regions i'm going to also give you this link guys so you see sap cloud platform regions and service portfolio so you see they have sap's own neo infrastructure which is in yellow dots then 
it's powered by AWS, Azure, GCP, and Alibaba. Also, they have added. So Alibaba only in China because China's government is very strict. They tend to hide everything. So they store everything. They only allow storing of their data in in Chinese uh, servers and Chinese data centers, which is hosted by Alibaba. So you see, the data center for Alibaba is only available in China. But then we have GCP, Google Cloud Platform. Azure and AWS and you see there are different data centers see and each data center is also offering some services which are common some unique services also they offer in their different different data centers you see so many data centers they have across the globe to host different different services clear everybody what is data center and you, you can also come down and see which service is available in which data center See which service is available in which data center. You can see here. Now, if I say SAP Analytics Cloud, you see SAP Analytics Cloud is also a service application as a service. It's available both in Neo and Cloud Foundry. You see, it's available in Neo and Cloud Foundry. Some features of SAP Analytics Cloud is not available in Neo, like for example planning feature if you want to do machine learning with sap analytics cloud which we will also learn in this course also then that service is not available in neo that's only available in cloud foundry and with the cloud foundry these are all the regions you can choose from so if you are working in singapore you have a good choice you will go with this singapore so actually when you buy sap analytics cloud in your company SAP will see where are you coming from and what is your nearest data center so they will enable the cloud SAP analytics cloud service in the nearest data center if you are let's say working in France so what is nearest data center is Euro Frankfurt so they will enable this SAP analytics cloud service in European region in the Frankfurt and that's why whenever you get your URL you can actually check with the URL of SAP Analytics Cloud, which your company has got from SAP, which region your server is. Suppose I go back. Now you see here this. Can you see this URL? This is a trial. I'll show you how to get this trial. So if you carefully observe this URL, I'll let me copy this URL in a notepad. Now, if you observe this, can you see this EU10? EU means European Union. So for this trial server, which I am using today here, the data center which they, they I am connected to Europe. They are hosting this trial instance in the Europe. It's a Europe data center where they are hosting this. All my data is getting stored in Europe. OK, so using this sometime you get here US, US to something like this, which means that data center is in US. Sometime you get AU, Australia. Yeah, something like this. So this way you the URL of the SAP Analytics Cloud. You can easily know which data center you see again here Euro EU10. <coughs> which data center your application is hosted, your SAP Analytics Cloud is hosted. So whenever your company is going to buy SAP Analytics Cloud plan, they will ask you. Sometimes they ask you also which data center you want to configure and provision SAP Analytics Cloud service. So this will be a question which also can be asked to you as an SAP Analytics Cloud expert in your company by your admin or by your CIO, which data center shall we choose? So what you should do, you should go and check which country you are and then you can come here to this URL. Let me also give this link to all of you in the PPT. So check data centers here. So let me make it as a clickable link. So guys, you get this PPT. So you click on this link, it'll take you. So that time you can come and check here. SAP Analytics Cloud, Cloud Foundry. Go with Cloud Foundry. It has all the latest features of SAP Analytics Cloud. Now it's available on AWS, Alibaba. Only two infrastructure providers are supported, which means if your company have a Google Cloud, uh, Google, uh, Google's infrastructure as a service today, you can't use Analytics Cloud. 
you have to mandatorily buy AWS or Alibaba okay for only China now since majority of you are out of China of course you are must be in some of the reason you have to have of course an AWS service bot which SAP will provision for you for they will charge you for this infrastructure also they will also charge you for cloud foundry cloud platform and they will charge you for this application as a service so you see your infrastructure as a service your platform as a service and your application as a service all three they will charge you for behind the scene all, all SAP will do that they will just ask you which data center you want so what you can come you can come here you can check analytics cloud cloud foundry aws and you see the data centers these are all the available ones today so this can change so always refer the link it can change any time it more data centers keeps get added by sap so now what you do suppose i am in india what is nearest singapore is nearest right so i'll go with singapore data center or australia data center that is what you should choose you should tell your cio that we go with singapore or australia okay suppose you are in let's say um, uh, you are in um, denmark you will probably go with the europe data center because that is nearest you are in let's say toronto then we don't have any canadian data center as of now available for sap analytics cloud so you'll go with us uh, in us i think they have only one right now but maybe they can also add, add something on east coast later on oh this is east coast so they can add it something for west coast later so you can always go and check here this is first question which will be asked to you which data center shall we choose come to this link find sap analytics cloud what are all the available offerings for infrastructure options and which data center to choose so you can tell so i am in india so uh, two three weeks ago in my company we were having a provisioning meeting for second tenant which we are buying and uh, that was for india we are buying another tenant of sac they asked me this question anubhav which uh, data center do you think we should go with so we i told them go with singapore because that is closest to us yeah in india so we go with this one actually clear everyone how do you go and tell now i think you are all clear what is these things terminologies what is a tenant what is cloud platform what is data center and what is the reason where you can see which services are offered in which reasons okay so this is about basics of cloud i hope all of you are clear now guys at this time i would give an opportunity to all of you to please ask your questions any questions you have feel free to ask on these topics any questions you can unmute your line and ask always it is always recommended to choose nearest data center if you by mistake choose a different one it's okay but sometimes you know you may see a lag when you are building stories and dashboards which we will learn you will see a lag actually because you're, you're sitting far from the data center so try to select a data center which is closest to you you're going to get better performance obviously if your server is near to you you're going to get better performance now the question very important question which has also asked to me some time back can i change the data center once let's say my company decided europe can i change it answer is no if decision has been made by you and your company that we want to go with this data center you cannot change okay second thing is machine learning available in neo if i go with infrastructure option uh, sorry platform option as neo no you have to be very careful and look at the services offered by sap okay services offered which data center what services sap is offering so some of the times you by mistake choose neo you tell them neo and then you see machine learning you can't do in neo so that time you will have problem so be very very careful you should go with the cloud foundry only with aws second question which also they may ask you is we our company already buy google uh, google's infrastructure as a service we already purchased long back can i reuse that same for provisioning analytics cloud answer is no analytics cloud as a service software as a service only supports aws at the moment doesn't support google alibaba and anything else so you see you have to ask sap 
uh, to provision AWS also. So SAP will provision all three for you behind the scene. They will actually activate subscription for all three for you. SAP will do that. SAP already did partnership with AWS, Alibaba, Google Cloud Platform and Azure. So behind the scene, they will automatically set up machines required everything. They will manage. Remember vendor vendor will manage it. You don't have to worry. Do you know what is the size of basis team for analytics cloud? Can anybody guess and tell me on the line? What is the size of basis team who manage this manage the software for analytics cloud? Basis team size zero zero Yes, zero You don't need a single basis person That's why a lot of basis people are losing their job because more and more companies buying cloud solutions so here infrastructure security networking all of it is managed by vendor itself you just open the system start working with it yeah okay so let's take a quick break here for five minutes after the break we will start introduction of our own premise solution like what is bw what is bi what is bpc what is s4 hana what is hana we will discuss all of this in our next discussion we'll take a break for five minutes and come back this is Rajesh here. Yes, please. First of all, uh, many thanks. It, it was an awesome difference between the the uh, on-premise and cloud. So, uh, and uh, in our organization, it's basically Azure. So, what I understood that if we need to leverage uh, the SSC mm -hmm. over Azure, it may not be supported directly. It's not. It's not. It's Even. it's not. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. But as you are telling that SAP has already partnered with Azure, mm -hmm. so so months in near future will it it may come up, right? It may come up. It may come up. But today, when you buy SAP Analytics Cloud subscription, what you will see is yeah. the only supporting AWS. You can see availability metrics here. Na? If somebody asks you this question, you should prove your point. Mm -hmm. You can show the data. You can say see it's written here and i'm not saying this sap is saying this help yep. not sap.com so you can go yep, and if you get in into any debate with any colleague don't get in into any debate yep. just open this link i put the link also in ppt just open this up and yep. show them see it's not supporting azure see yep, it's clearly written that, here cool. what is which service of yeah. sap sap supported on which uh, which account you see here so hana service is supported on azure is also yeah. supported on gcp google cloud platform yeah it's also supported on aws so you can always go and check but when it comes to sap analytics cloud which is software as a service only supported on aws we can see that yeah mm -hmm. okay yes. yeah many thanks mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. also uh, so one more questions which I have already asked uh, about gathering requirements for uh, deploying an SSC AI infrastructure. If you have time, you can just get uh, back on that. No, remember here the entire solution yeah. is managed by vendor, so you don't have to have any requirement gathering for deploying. The system will be provisioned by SAP, and they will give you a URL. This URL you will get. Mm -hmm. That's all. You don't have to do any deployment yourself. Now, I guess you called me about two weeks ago for asking a question about requirement gathering from the use case perspective, right? Is that what you? Yes, requirement. Is? Yeah, yeah, requirement gathering so, from the use perspective. Use case yeah. perspective. How will you uh, yes. gather gather functional requirement from your colleagues about what they want to do? Okay, so don't worry. I have. Perfect. Yes. I have prepared a document. You see this one software requirement specification yeah. document. This I promised you I'll give you when you subscribe for the today. I'll share. Yeah. I'll share it. So you see yeah. and Jackson 30 year old young IT product expert with a strong interpersonal skill. So this is how you write user personas. This is how you write yeah. job functions. This is how you write business stories. This is how you present your data. This is how you write complete requirement. And this is what a unique offering with Anubo trainings you're not going to get anywhere in the world. I can openly challenge no training company today offers this this kind of documents. You see prototype. I wrote it with my own pen and pencil. See awesome. 
So this is how you awesome. draw the mockups. You draw the samples. What is that is a requirement? You completely draw every single detail you collect. Requirement one, two, three, four. How do you? How should it perceive it? Any coding requirement? Who all should be involved? And how should your final outcome should look like? This is what awesome. I have done it, and I will share it in the hopefully next to next class with you, so that yeah. you can also draft a similar document like this. This is the right way of drafting any requirement. Okay, so this is already planned. Don't worry. We have these case study okay. cases. Everything is planned, so you will learn all of this. Don't worry. Yeah. So for deployment, nothing is required. For deployment, no. of it, be it any number of users, no. be it any number of things. Say, for say. deployment, what whenever your company is buying subscription for SAC, that time you have to just go and they will ask you a couple of questions: which data center you want, how many users you have. Yeah, these kind of basic questions they will yeah. ask. So you will also be able to now tell which uh, which is the infrastructure you you can it supports, what data yeah. center you want that I already showed you. So other than that, yeah. the deployment part SAP will take care. It's a vendor managed solution. Software as a service. It's a cloud solution. Software as a service, right? Yeah. Cool. Many what things. is it between single tenant and multiple tenant? Single talent is okay. Good question. So if you remember what is a tenant? We already discussed tenant is a guy who is having a user in that who's actually living uh, on that system, right? So single talent means sometime I am a big corporation. I'm Nestle or I'm Hindustan Unilever or I'm ONGC or I'm Reliance. I'm a big corporation big big IT budget. I have billions of dollars with me. I want to still use cloud. I want to use cloud but I don't want anybody else to share with me. So my specific requirement is, hey Amazon, give me a computer with 500 petabytes of memory, but make sure that all 500 is allocated to me. It's a single tenant. Are you understanding? I am the I am I am owning that entire thing. I am the only one in that. That way I get more flexibility. I can change ask Amazon to change certain system parameters because it's I'm owning it. I'm paying more for you. I'm paying more for it. So I can ask Amazon to change more parameters. What is multi tenant? Multi tenant is what I told you. Sharing. It's a pooling. In multi tenant, multiple people sharing that system to reduce the total cost of ownership. See, guys, in com in world, there are so many small companies. They can't afford, you know, large computers. They don't have that much of IT budget. So they go to Amazon. They Amazon will offer them such a price which nobody can offer. And I'll show you some of the companies. They offer a website hosting in just five dollar a month. Yes. So let me show you one. One of the cloud vendor, it's a platform as a service, Ocean Cloud. So they offer, okay, they offer in a platform at just five dollar uh, a month. Can you believe that it's as cheaper? How it is possible? Because it's a multi-tenant environment they offer. You will not realize from your side, but behind the scene, actually, system is actually offering you a multi-tenant so you see one gigabyte memory one pro v cpu one terabyte of transfer speed 25 gigabyte of hard disk at a rate of 0 0.00007 uh, dollar per hour and five dollar a month it's as cheaper as that so do you think they will locate a dedicated computer for us no they will have big computer with some memory they will give a sharing basis multi-tenant environment in multi-tenant environment you have less flexibility you can't go and tell uh, azure or uh, amazon to change certain system parameters depending on your requirement because if they change it it will get changed for everybody which they will not allow you so depending on your budget you can also decide whether you want to be the only tenant in that say i pay for three three beds in a pg in a room in my pg there are three beds so either I go and share it the, those three beds with three people the cost will come down or I pay myself for all three beds monthly rent equal to three beds rent then I am the only tenant living in that room of PG. So that's what multi tenants and single tenant is clear. 
Good. Uh, okay. Hello, so, Arun. And the number of users, let's say we took 100 users, company take 100 users domain, and then they want to add more users or reduce the number. Can we do that? Yes, that's what the advantage of cloud. Remember, scalability is a good advantage, which is not with the OP. In OP, if you want to add more users and more resources, you have to actually go and you have to also add also more hardware. You have to buy more licenses. It's costly as and when you go and progress, it's costly. But when it comes to uh, the cloud, you can scale faster. You can ask Amazon to add 100 gigs of more memory. They will do it for you in no time. Yeah, you will say I am having a license of 10 users right now. Please add 10 more users. You start paying more fee. It's like data packs. So today you are having a 20 or 100 Mbps internet speed with a, let's say 3000 gigabytes of data, high speed data. Tomorrow your data increases. Do you need to change your router? No. Just go to your, your internet service provider and ask them to add more data, more smart bytes to your data, right? And that way you will get more gigabytes of memory. Sorry, more gigabytes of fast speed data. So it's as pay per go, pay as you go. So if you feel you need to scale up, you pay, start paying more subscription fees monthly basis. Your business is increasing. Your user base is increasing. You want more space. You want more processing. You pay as you go. Clear? So scalability is easier in cloud solutions. Okay. Thank you. Guys, we'll take a quick break for five minutes and then we will take further questions towards the end. Okay, I'll I'll go for a break. Please mute your line. Okay, everyone back after the break. So let's get started and now discuss about what is SAP other solutions are all about. So before we do, uh, we already know what is SAP Cloud Platform. Let me just bring that definition of SAP Cloud Platform also on the next slide. It's better that we keep it separate. So you already know what is NEO and what is Cloud Foundry. NEO, the infrastructure is owned by SAP and Cloud Foundry, the infrastructure provider can be AWS. And we also saw where all the data centers and regions are and in which data center and region, what services is offered by SAP. So actually speaking, SAP Analytics Cloud is a software as a service, which is also hosted or offered by SAP cloud platform. So what is the underlying computer or what is the sorry? What is the underlying platform on which this application is built? So this is an application. Okay, just like Gmail. It's an application. So it's it's based on SAP cloud platform. It has both Neo and Cloud Foundry depending on the Neo and Cloud Foundry features may differ. So Cloud Foundry has more features like predictive functionality, which you see in um, SAP Cloud Platform, SAP Analytics Cloud is offered by Neo only. So uh, sorry, it's Cloud Foundry only. So whenever you have been asked which one to go for, go for Cloud Foundry and go with the nearest region. You can already check that over there. Now coming to the next uh, discussion, which is what is HANA and what is S4 HANA? These terms we use very, very often. Now they may be also confusing for some of you. So let's understand the difference between HANA and S4 HANA and what is it all about actually. So quickly a little bit of definition part. What is HANA? HANA is stands for high performance analytical appliance. Okay, high performance analytical appliance. What is it actually? It is an in-memory database. What is an in-memory database? So typically, as you all know, with the basics of computer, all the data of which is stored in a computer is stored in hard disk, right? Hard disk. Now that will bring a bottleneck. Whenever you want to read the data from hard disk, it first come from hard disk to RAM, from RAM to CPU. So the performance of your overall computer depends on how fast you read data from hard disk to RAM. So one major factor. Now what SAP did is SAP said 
with the reduce reduction of cost of memory over a period of time so i remember my first mp3 player which was 256 uh, megabyte of memory it used to store hardly 25 songs i purchased it at a cost of uh, let's say 100 dollars in 2008 and today at a 100 dollar cost i can get maybe uh, up to 32 gigabytes of uh, mp3 player right the memory cost has reduced significantly over a period of time now this reduction in memory cost allows software vendors and designers to develop applications and softwares which can keep all the data in the ram so you don't have to now keep data in the hard disk because a cheap memory you can keep all the data in the ram itself that's what sap did they have designed a database technology which keeps all the data in the ram unlike traditional database systems like oracle there they keep all the data in the hard disk sap hana keeps all the data in memory in ram now this gave a uh, amazing computational power to this system so sap developed a database called hana hana stands for high performance analytical appliance so it's a in memory database it's a in memory database now after this database was designed sap also added more capability in this database like programming support you can also build programming programs on the on top of it and you can run them you can build a java program hana access program you can run them also and they also enabled built in machine learning capability called ml it comes under uh, eml component and uh, this is what sap has built in they have also added predictive capability it's called pal predictive analytics library so so many other features and services they have added in this database hence hana is called now as platform because a platform is what offers different variety of services so the main function though the main function of this database is to store your data of course it is to store your data but another things also it can do okay so this has become very powerful over a period of time this was released somewhere around 2012 13 and over last 7 to 8 year it has tremendously come out very well okay so it's a database now if you really see typically any sap application if you ever worked with sap ecc or sap solutions sap erp solution typically follows three tier architecture okay it follows three tier architecture what is three tier architecture it's called real time three tier in these three tiers there are three layers the first layer is called presentation layer this presentation layer is nothing but your sap gui then you have your application layer this is also known as basis sap basis there are basis consultant who work with this uh, system setup system administration user creation they work with that and then there is the third layer called database layer where your data is, is stored so this is our three tiers where you have some tool using this tool you can connect to the server then this server is where all the processing is happening application layer and then finally all the data which you have is actually stored in the database so you remember input output whenever you learn a machine input output processing and data correct that's how we learn any engineering subject so these are all the three tier architecture till today majority of sap implementations were using oracle max db db2 db6 mysql different databases which are non sap databases okay so actual sap's capability is this application layer this is what sap focus the most till today and this is what is called ecc okay ecc is nothing but your middleware your actual functionality so ecc includes functionality for departments like creating sales order creating purchase order creating materials that's all is stored as ecc enterprise core components ecc so this was the 
primarily the the real ERP. So this basis is technical. This is nothing. It has nothing inside until you until you have ECC you can't use a functionality ECC is actually functionality functionality means your uh, sales order creation purchase order creation your uh, employee creation is processing employee salary applying leave request uh, changing uh, HR records all promotions travel everything is managed by ECC <clears throat> now what SAP did is they have said that now we have our own database why do we use other companies database with our solutions? They change the database. They throw away these existing databases and they plugged in something called in-memory database, which is HANA. So this solution has become ECC on HANA or also known as suite on HANA. Okay, this is called suite on HANA. So they removed the databases, other databases, and they said we have our own database now. We will use it. We will use with our solution this own database. So this becomes suite on HANA, SAP ECC on HANA, where now you can utilize the com powerful computation power of SAP HANA DB. So HANA, if you really see, is just a database. <clears throat> It's just a database. Of course, it has more capability, but it's mainly a database. It's working as a data store for your app. Actual functionality is here. Now, this functionality also SAP evolved over a period of time. You all know we all evolve. We all learn new things. These learnings we put it in the system. So SAP also evolved their ECC, and they have got with a completely new ERP solution. And this new ERP solution is known as. <coughs> which was introduced in 2015 and is going to be the future of ERP. So SAP introduced a new ERP solution, the future of ERP, and this new ERP solution is known as S4 HANA. So now this instead of ECC, we call this solution as S4 HANA. What they did in S4 HANA, they have got new functionality. They have got new functionality. They are fully leveraging SAP HANA and they are offering new new functionality like inbuilt machine learning, like uh, smart uh, analytics, embedded analytics, new data models, removing some of the old database tables aggregate tables because now aggregates can be calculated on fly so basically just understand in a in a layman words or in a, in a normal terms sap evolved their ecc to a new solution and this new solution is known as s4 hana why hana is here because this solution only and only and only works on hana db it does not work on any other database. So ECC can work on other databases also. It can work on HANA or it can you can use other databases also. But when it comes to S4 HANA, it only and only works on HANA database. So HANA is just playing as a database. The name of this solution is called S4 HANA. So when somebody asks what is S4 HANA, it's SAP's new ERP introduced in 2015 and it's replacing ECC. <clears throat> so S4 HANA is a solution, is a ERP solution, is a latest SAP's ERP solution, I would say. So today, if you if you are a company, if you're owner of a company, suppose you are running a big manufacturing company, in order to integrate your departments in your company, you need a software. And SAP is the leader in ERP. So if you go to SAP and ask SAP, hey SAP, can you give me a ERP software? What do you think SAP will give you? They will give you SAP S4 HANA. So S4 HANA is the solution. HANA is a database. Are you clear what is HANA? HANA is just one component of this entire solution. It's just a database. S4 HANA is the solution. So this entire solution is called as S4 HANA. So it's latest ERP solution introduced in 2015. Now what is the advantage? How it is better than ECC? It also offers two ways 
of deployment. One is S4HANA on-premise, which is just called S4HANA. Second is called S4HANA cloud. So you can also use this solution directly in the cloud where you don't have to buy any hardware, anything. You can directly ask SAP, give me S4HANA cloud. If I'm a small company, I don't have a big budget. I can't uh, have so big infrastructure. I can't have data centers. I can't do that. I go to SAP and say, can you give me something use and throw types? They will give you SAP S4HANA cloud. So there you don't have to actually install anything. It's a cloud solution like we discussed already. And this one is an on-premise solution in which now you need hardware, you need bases, you need teams. So you need everything in this like your ECC world. But the only difference how it is different from ECC is latest functionality, latest feature, latest ERP with HANA as their primary DB. It cannot work on other database. It only works on HANA. And as for HANA cloud, it's uh, of course working behind the scene on HANA, but it's offered as a cloud as a service ERP as a service not as a on-premise So that's about HANA and S4 HANA. Okay. Now there is a lot I have a dedicated course on Anubo trainings those who are willing to learn S4 HANA I have two dedicated courses in S4 HANA both S4 HANA on-premise and S4 HANA cloud I offer so if you see this ABAP on HANA come S4 HANA technical training This is my training on S4 HANA and ABAP on HANA you wanted to learn you can subscribe this course it's a complete dedicated power pack 40 hour training on ABAP on HANA come S4 HANA which is on premise and I also have S4 HANA cloud course also available so you get everything with me um, you know complete experience you can learn with us you see S4 HANA cloud extensions course so we have both courses separately available this course is focusing analytics cloud not S4 HANA so I cannot be unfair to you and I start teaching these things here in this course that will be unfair to you You are here to learn analytics cloud not s4 hana and I hope that's the expectation But just wanted to give you an introduction now Since this layer is changed to hana this layer changed to s4 hana mainly the functionality also changed There is also a change in this layer Earlier we used to use solutions in SAP GUI Even today some of the solutions. So this is SAP solution. This is an s4 hana solution system You can see here we're going to also learn integration with S4 HANA in our coming chapter in this course. Don't worry. So I'll also show you integration with S4 HANA uh, with Analytics Cloud. But this is uh, where your company use ERP. This is SAP GUI. Now with the modern world, most of the people are using their applications on mobile. Now SAP GUI does not work on mobile. Does not. So SAP introduced a new presentation also called SAP Fury. So you might have heard about Fury. Fury's new SAP's presentation layer. It's basically front-end technology, which is web-based and responsive. Responsive means an application. What is a responsive application? An application which adapt itself according to device that's called responsive application so fury is the new sap's front-end technology which allows you to build applications which can run on browser mobile and tablet and it adapt single code you write only one code this one code works for all devices all browsers all operating systems can you imagine the power so with s4 ana the default user experience is fury all the sales order creation purchase order creation everything you do with fury apps so sap gives a lot of fury apps you use them so in ecc we had no fury apps but with s4 hana you get all the applications enabled with powered by fury so fury is users experience you can run them on mobile tablet desktop any browser mozilla firefox Chrome Edge Internet Explorer Safari Mac Windows Android any operating system any browser Any device you can run that's the greatest advantage due to change in the industry change in the trend in industry Most of the applications these days are consumed over the mobile phones SAP introduced this I also have dedicated courses on SAP Fiori those who are willing to learn SAP Fiori, please subscribe my UI5 and Fiori development course. If you're interested in coding in UI5 Fiori apps, you can subscribe this course. Again, I would repeat 
the course which you are taking currently is not focusing on fury it's not focusing on fury security there are dedicated courses for these those who are willing to learn development how to build a fury app you can subscribe my ui5 and fury training you guys are here for analytics cloud you are not here for fury learning you are not here for learning s4 hana you are not here for learning hana you are here to learn analytics cloud but sometimes these words may come at front of you so it should not confuse you now there's one more myth which is there around the world that is fury app only work on s4 no fury is a technology now this technology you can use to build any screen for anything in fact one surprising fact i'll tell you if you see this sap analytics cloud screen it's actually a fury based ui it's a fury app yes it's a fury screen so if you see now this entire thing what you see on your screen sap analytics cloud screen it's a fury actually it's a fury user experience how do we know we press control alt shift p on this screen control alt shift p is a shortcut so if i come to this screen and press control alt shift p okay it's not opening but ideally it should open so it will tell me which version of fury it is using okay which version of sap fury it is using anyway i can also right click and go to inspect option and if you come inside the inspect option you will see here inside this in inspect option different uh, different uh, controls which you see and they all belongs to sap fury if you just quickly browse something so don't worry guys how do i get this screen we'll see this in the next class right now you don't uh, worry about all this but if you just quickly come inside you see sap ui can you see this sap ui this is indicating that it's a fury okay you see sap ui sap ui js view yeah javascript view it's a sap ui5 application which is actually fury user experience so whenever you see an sap this this analytics cloud it's actually fury based the design principles are fury based it's completely fury based so that's why you may get confused sometime fury is the technology to build new front end with sap world so i hope this clarifies the difference between hana and s4 hana hana is the database s4 hana is a solution this entire solution which you see na all three layers together is called s4 hana the main backbone of this is hana database hana is a database okay so i hope this is clear now now coming to the next question what is what do we do with this solution how this uh, solution work together so what let's say consider an example i am a big company like walmart so walmart has different stores in uh, united states at different regions so walmart has a store at miami they have one on santa clara then i have one on king county and then i have in new york city or la now i have different stores i am a big brand like walmart and i am using sap erp now i have implemented sap erp in my company and i have data i have implemented s4 ana so i have all my data uh, in these different different uh, uh, solutions these are different subsidiaries or different marts i have now all of these marts are writing data to one single database which is sap hana because i'm using s4 ana so all these data centers are writing data to this sap hana <coughs> in usa in usa yeah now walmart also purchased flipkart as you all know in india they have bought a very expensive deal they have purchased flipkart so technically speaking uh, flipkart which you see in india is also a, a unit of walmart now so whatever revenue flipkart is making that is also counted as walmart's revenue correct so similarly let's say in india they have different stores they have also implemented s4 hana in india and likewise let's say in brazil and south africa now all the data is in this hana db together with that they have also let's say other solutions like oracle people soft other different 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 solutions these different company uh, the walmart has now what does the walmart want to do walmart ceo walmart ceo want to know what is my total global sales what is my total global sales across the whole world now if you understand there are different solutions they are using oracle people soft xyz 
and the data is stored in these different 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 solutions now in order to find out the total sales across entire walmart they need to now they need to now bring this data from all these different different solutions like oracle people soft barn tally they may be using tally because you know tally is used very famously in india as a counting software so a lot of different solutions walmart is using in different countries now all this need, data needs to converge at one place why because my ceo wants to know what is my total sales or my ceo wants to know what is the region wise sales country wise sales which country is giving highest amount of sales which company ha country has highest potential to go further so all these things i want to know so basically what happens all this data which is there at different data sources we bring them in a one single system now can you imagine the size of this system where you bring all this data it has to be humongous it has to be humongous right and that's why it's called warehouse now what kind of warehouse it is it is data warehouse right so data warehouse is called sap bw business warehouse so sap bw is a so software or a solution it's an on premise software first of all this software will bring or will allow you to store data from all different sources to bring together in one single software that's called sap bw are you clear difference between s4 ana and bw s4 ana is used here this is your s4 ana this software is is basically an erp software now likewise your company have different erp different softwares you bring data from all these software together in one single big big warehouse that's called business warehouse now the process to bring this data from different system and sources in business warehouse this process is called etl what is called etl 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 stands for extraction transformation and loading basically you are extracting data from sources you are transforming transforming why because your data may be in different currencies it's not possible if i add indian rupees with us dollar and i tell tell you what is my total sales in in uh, in my business not fair you have to transform transformation also means currency conversion date conversion unit conversion yeah different rules applying taxes in india we have gst system in us we have different system so you have to do all transformation and then you do loading finally you load data so this is a big warehouse of data where all the data from different source comes and converge so that's one single system which sap which is also offered sap bw now data has come you are happy what will you do is this data if i open billions and billions and billions of sales records will you be able to understand anything no no nobody if i just open a, a data set of bw you see billions and billions and billions of records your ceo neither me neither you no one in the world can understand the pattern out of it no one it has of no use okay so you got a crude oil this crude oil you can't put in your petrol in your petrol car you need to process this crude oil to take out the petrol so that you can feed that to your car your, if you put crude oil in your car your car will blast it's a crude oil it's a crude raw data in form of records billions and billions of records stored in bw system now you cannot make out any decision on this now what you need to do first of all data is stored in tables database tables now what you need to do is you need to combine these multiple database tables together okay so you need to say my data how my data is interrelated how it is connected so you have to do this this process is called as 
modeling okay data is distributed in multiple tables you need to take out some relationship first of all between this data it's called modeling now once you model the data this data is prepared now this model can be consumed in different system and these different system is called bob j or sap bi what you need to do is you need to go inside read this model and take out some informed decision in form of charts so sap offers two solutions one is sap bob j business objects in business objects we have different uh, sub areas like crystal report uh, bob j dashboard bob j data analyzer data, uh, so a lot of these things are there so what you do is you connect your bob j system with sap bw system you connect it using different connection methods i'm not going to go into each of these solutions and explain you but just understand the over big picture so what you do with bi and bob j you will connect these systems with your bw system and you read these models which are created in bw or you can also read the raw data also both are possible you can read either raw data or you can read this uh, intelligent models also and once you get uh, read this data now using the techniques and software and tools available in bob j and bi you can project this data you can take out informed decision let's say for example if i am walmart i want to know how many laptops were sold during thanksgiving days what is the sales of my iphones as compared to other smartphones in the market so all of this all of this you can do it analysis on top of this bob j and bi actually okay so you will take out finally some beautiful dashboards some pie charts yeah some uh, graphical charts so all this you do it using this sap bi and bob j software so you understood first we get data humongous data comes here we do modeling we read this model using bi and bob j depending on your choice so both do same thing so basically why they they are doing same thing and why they are two then sap bi is native sap solution which was there since many years sap in 2008 acquired a company called business objects it was paris based company they acquired it and then they position it also as another another software to do analytics so bob j and sap bi both are the solutions business intelligence bi means intelligence you go inside this data you take out some informed decisions you analyze patterns these patterns will help you to take better decisions for future so i hope this entire flow is clear what is s for ana what is hana what is uh, bw what is modeling what is etl and what is bi and bob j so this processing with bob j and bi is doing on top of this system is called olap processing olap processing olap stands for online analytical processing these are sap solutions now guys sap is not the only company in the erp space there are other companies like ibm oracle they are also doing building this kind of solutions so there are companies who are also building these kind of solutions which we will also discuss in coming days what are all some of the solution names and why what is happening now in the trending industry so guys all of these which you see here in this entire diagram these are all on premise solutions which means even i am a small company to implement this i need to have big it budget because they are all on premise i need to buy hardware i need to hire people i need to hire security i need to do networking i need to set up operating systems i need to set up every single thing <coughs> everything i need to do everything i need to set up upfront cost is very high if i want to take out informed decision for my business i need to set up all of this all of this on premise solution clear everyone what is bo what is bi what is bw what is s4 what is hana this is how they work together in a large corporation like nestle ongc reliance 
this is how all these solutions they buy from SAP as on-premise solutions. And today, some of you are working either here, either here, or here, or here, or here. Some of you are working on one of these areas today. Okay, so that's all solution. There is one more solution called BPC. Okay, what is BPC? BPC stands for Business Planning and Consolidation System. Okay, it's a completely different product. Okay, it's a completely different product. Now, what does BPC do? BPC is mainly used for planning and consolidation. What is planning? And what is consolidation? Uh, right now, I'm not giving you definition for these two, uh, the official definition, but just understand as a company, my main goal is to make profit. I'm not running a charity. Every company you look at, they are running for profit. Okay, they're running for profit. They are not NGOs. They are companies. They are corporations. They are running for profit. They are running behind profit, making money, right? When you want to make money, you need to have some plan, some thought in your mind that I want to make this much money with this much of resources. Today I have this many computer, this much of buildings, this much of assets, this much of liabilities, this much of loans, this many of employees. This is the salary cost. This is the HR cost. This is the finance cost. This is the travel cost. This is the employee management cost. This is the hardware cost. I need to somehow make my balance sheet. Yeah, so that I can make a better decision to be able to plan my future investments. And I need to also report for compliance reason, country compliance, share market compliance. I need to report my numbers, quarterly numbers. How much was the profit last quarter? How much is the increase in quarter and quarter revenue? How do you see all these TV news channels? They will report company numbers. How does that happen? All of that comes under planning, making balance sheets, preparing future business plans to actually grow your business. All of this is planning capability what BPC offers. SAP solution. What is consolidation? I am a big company, but I have small, small subsidiaries. Do you know, guys, Gillette? Is Gillette a company? No. Gillette is just a subsidiary. It's a brand of a big company called Proctal and Gambles. Yes. Proctal. Nobody heard about Proctal and Gambles. They heard about Gillette, but they don't know that it's a brand of Proctal and Gambles. It's a very big corporation. Proctal and Gamble. So they have so many brands inside. If you really see, you might have heard about these products. They are all Proctal and Gamble products. Tide washing powder, right? So if you see this uh, booty, then you have this uh, Popto, Oral B, the toothbrush. It's a brand. Hair and shoulders, Pantene. What do you think they are? They all belongs to Procter and Gamble's. Gillette, you see. So Pampers for ch children diapers, Lacoste, they all are belongs to Procter and Gamble. These are all different subsidiaries of Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. Clear, everybody? All these products which we use on our daily life, they all belongs to Pro Procter and Gamble. So it's a big company. It's an organization. It's a mammoth. They have subsidiaries. Now, if as a Procter and Gamble CEO, I want to know what is my each, how my each subsidiary is doing. If I want to acquire a different company today, what is the impact of that on my business numbers? If I hire this company, let's say if I acquire this company, what will happen to my numbers? Will it increase or will it go down? Because if I acquire that company, I will also get customers of that company. So how much increase will be there in my customers? And as a result of increase in customer, how much will be the impact on my business? Will I also make more profit? Can I make more profit with that? Is this acquisition which I'm going to do, is it profitable for me? That's called consolidation. So a BPC system in SAP world helps you to do planning and consolidation. I hope, I hope you got basic idea now SCP analytics cloud if you really look at it covers so many functionality actually 
it will touch some functionality of some of these things all of this together in one single solution called sac yes yes guys yes that's why learning sac is going to add a lot to your resume you gonna get great benefit learning sac because we gonna do planning we gonna do bi we gonna do also bob j features we gonna do data warehousing uh, this uh, transformation thing things modeling things lot of lot of these things we gonna do using sac in coming days as and when i go to each feature i will explain you which feature is that so then the important question comes what's the strategy will since you are saying that bob j and bi things you can do with sac bpc things you can do with sac bw things you can do with sac what will happen to these solutions then are these solutions going to get dismantled permanently will sap discontinue the solution what will happen what's the strategy what's the strategy going forward with that i am done with today's class next class we'll start with this strategy how the strategy is building up what will happen to bpc which case you should propose bpc which case you should propose analytics cloud what are all the different use cases and synergies with respect to sap analytics cloud i hope you enjoyed today's class time for your questions one by one go ahead please uh, anu is bpc a separate box or it yes. runs on it's a separate box separate solution altogether sap sell different license for bpc separately your company can buy it and from where does it take the data it takes the data from bcc database or bi database it has its it's again a three sap uh, system with three tier architecture it has its own database and you can port database from a different system to bpc also just like you bring that means we have Mm-hmm. At least you have to do the ATL for BPC also, like. Yes, yes. You have to also do kind of ATL for BPC also. Because your different oh, subsidiary, oh, different oh. subsidiaries are in different countries, so they share different uh, currency codes. So to report a financial numbers, GFRS numbers, then you need to bring everything in a single currency, right? So you have to also do that. Yes, please. Next question. Can you migrate uh, your reports to Analytical Cloud? Okay, let's park this question at the moment. Let us park this question. So, guys, when you go to doctor for first day, will doctor give you a very heavy dose of injection? Never. Doctor will diagnose your problem. It will ask you symptoms, and then it will understand the disease. Disease, and slowly, when the disease is caught, daily every single follow up with the doctor it will increase the dose of antibiotic to your body so your body doesn't collapse rather it respond towards the disease same thing is happening with you and me i am your doctor you are my patient you come to today's first session with me i cannot give you heavy dose of antibiotic very next day you will say anubhav what is he teaching not able to understand anything i'll not go for class not happen with me we will go slow little little dose of antibiotic every day that's where you will learn things rather than getting bored of this course i promise you you will become expert on analytics cloud by end of this course i promise you but please allow me sometime i may have to park your questions because they are heavy dose of antibiotic you can't understand that immediately without understanding certain other things okay so please allow me some more time you will your answers your questions will be answered but i need to reach to that unit where i will cover that topic so some questions i may park it please don't mind allow me to proceed we will reach to the right chapter your questions will naturally be answered this was our first session and i believe we should start with foundation i will work on my students root because once the roots are strong fruits will naturally be strong next question related to today's discussion anything Uh, Anubhav, can this SAP HANA or Analytics Cloud can they hold unstructured data? Yes, in HANA we have also Doc Store concept which can hold unstructured data also. So we can have both structured and unstructured data. Now we have also got JSON Store with which you can have any unstructured data stored. But for processing the data, data has to be in structured format. Okay. data should be in structured format to process data better way it should be structured 
not in unstructured format. Okay. Even analytics cloud can handle that. Okay. Yes, we will we will learn transformation techniques in SAC when I'll show you modeling. We also have modeling feature in SAC. We're gonna learn that in our mm -hmm. coming coming days. There's a lot to come. This is just the beginning. Today was our first session. Yeah, got it. <clears throat> So, so we have uh, having the SAP Lumira Web ID. So are these the example of the Bob J or the SAP BI? So Lumira is a separate product. Tomorrow when I show you the strategy of SAC, you will understand that how Lumira is converging, how Bob J is converging, how uh, BW is converging, how BPC is converging. In which case you should go with BPC already or in which case you should uh, you can uh, propose SAP Analytics Cloud to your customers. So that is part of tomorrow's class. We'll discuss a strategy. And one more thing is like uh, in the application layer in the previous slide, uh, you mentioned basis. So I believe all the SAP consultant uh, will be working on the application layer, isn't it? No, some consultant work with HANA also. Those are called HANA consultants. Some consultant work on only presentation layer. They are called SAP UI5 developers and Fury developers. Some consultant work on only basis maintaining users in SAP system, making security, roles, username, uh, checking system health, enabling multiple database connections, uh, taking care of authorizations, uh, checking system health, performance tuning. All this is basis work. I mean the developer. Developer work with ABAP, UI5, Fury, Gateway, Launchpad, O data services. That's a different set of work. So now I I understand your 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 curiosity. Some of you would want to learn everything. You want to become a full stack developer. You want to work with this, this, and this. No problem. I have courses for that. You can subscribe my UI5 for Fury course to become a UI front end developer. You become a batsman. You subscribe my this course, Fury Security and Advanced Fury with basis tech, uh, basis and authorization. You become a fielder. And you subscribe my ABAP on HANA comes for HANA course. In this, you will learn HANA uh, development plus how to build CDS views, AMDP, ADBC, and you become a baller. So once you become a baller, you fielder and a batsman, you become an all-rounder. It's your choice how deep you want to go. How deep you want to go? It's your choice. You can subscribe. All. Majority of, of of people today they are going with all three. They've, those who want to become coder or developer, they are going with all three actually to become a full stack developer. Some of you already attended my three courses and you are here today with Analytics Cloud. So our main persona, our main goal, our focus is Analytics Cloud. Our main goal is to not learn S for HANA, as I already explained it. If the goal is to learn S for HANA, sorry, you are in a wrong course. Please subscribe my ABAP on HANA come S for HANA course. You are at a wrong place. If your goal is Analytics Cloud and how these current solutions are converging to analytics cloud in which case you propose what to your company or your company already bought analytics cloud then this course is the right course for you or if you're just a beginner if you're just a beginner with sap world without any programming skill you want to learn something to start your career in sap with you can start with analytics cloud you're a functional consultant or you're a you know about sap little bit but you never worked with anything you wanted to start and learn something something which helps you and adds you to your resume to get a better opportunity this course is for you sap analytics cloud there's a lot we're going to learn this was just a session on terminologies uh, and understanding of different systems please go through the video after three o'clock um, as a repeat please prepare your notes also so that you can follow up through the classes because this these discussions these topics are very important next question please Like, suppose my... You'll be teaching BPC too uh, for, uh, to, uh, uh, with analytic cloud. Uh, please do not interrupt. There was some other question. Can we take that first? Yes. Thank you, uh, yes. Actually, uh, what I was asking, suppose my organization wants to use two services offered by Cloud Foundry, but one of the services is offered by AWS and the other one is by GCP. So do I need to explicitly take a subscription from AWS as well as GCP or it, in the back end it will be taken care of by SAP and we just have to uh, subscribe to the services itself. Very good question. So if your company already has AWS, you can go to SAP and say I already have bought AWS. 
does that meet the system requirement to run SAC? If it does, SAP will reuse your AWS, which is managed by your company only directly, and they will implement PaaS platform as a service, which is Cloud Foundry on that AWS. They will plug that and they will put SAC on that, and you pay for uh, SAC plus separately you pay for AWS. That is option one. Option two, you simply go in SAP and say I need a SAP Analytics Cloud. They will provision everything behind the scene, including AWS. Whatever bare minimum AWS requirement they have, depending on your need, they will provision it. So both options are available for you. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay. There is a question now. I'll take it. The BPC. Will you be teaching BPC? No. I'm not a BPC expert. Nor I will be teaching BPC, but I will be touching the use cases for planning and consolidation. So guys, understand. We are not going to focus on solution like S4, BPC. Rather, we're going to understand the what will happen to the solution when SAC came in. Point one. Point two. What are all the use cases they offer? Like use cases planning. So we're going to see planning use case with SAC. Here use case is analytics, doing OLAP. What is the use case for OLAP? We're going to do OLAP. We're not going to learn Bob J. We're not going to do that. If I start teaching Bob J, 40 hour Bob J course, 40 hour BI course, 40 hour BW course, 40 hour SAP HANA course, 40 hour S4 HANA course, 40 hour BPC course. These are all different, different modules, different courses. Our job is to learn SAC and how SAC is complementing these solutions. What are all synergies you can make? Can I take data from existing BW system in SAC? That will be our goal. Our goal will be understanding the use cases. And how to implement these use cases using SSE? That will be our goal. I hope this is clear, guys. Our main goal will be focusing on use cases, not on these solutions. Yet, there are some use cases where we need to fetch data from these solutions which are already there in your company. That is called live data connection. We're going to cover that also in our course. How to connect with BPC, BW, and S4 HANA, and HANA. That is covered in this course. Which is very very later, not early, not so early. Heavy dose of antibiotic. Other questions before we close? If you don't have question, it's fine. You know, no need to unnecessarily create pressure and ask questions. You can also ask questions in chat window. Do we have infrastructure in SAP company? Do we have infrastructure in SAP company? Yes, the Neo which you saw in Cloud Foundry, sorry, the Neo which you saw in SAP Cloud Platform. That is owned by SAP. SAP owns the infrastructure here. You see IAS infrastructure is owned by SAP in case of NEO, but NEO offers very limited features. The latest is Cloud Foundry, which offers better features. And in fact, SAP Analytics Cloud, all the features are available with Cloud Foundry. You should go with this one. Okay. Is it possible to switch from a multi tenant to single tenant or not? As you mentioned, like that in data center, we can't uh, do any changes. So it depends. Suppose when you are going for buying SAC subscription, SAP will ask you, would you want, uh, how do you want the cost? So by default, everything is multi tenant. So multi tenant doesn't mean you go and check, okay, he, uh, this guy is also using it. You will not know that because there is a clear separation behind the scene using multi tenant data containers at the database level. So one tenant can never ever ever see data of another tenant. It's like you know you're living in a room with your roommates in PG and they all have their dedicated uh, dedicated cupboards where they're keeping all their clothing, books and all their necessary belongings is kept in separate cupboards. So it's exactly like that. You are sharing but you never realize that there is somebody else other tenant also living in the same. And that's how SAP optimize the cost of this those expensive systems and you also get a win-win situation better benefit cheaper uh, subscription service. So if you really see SAP analytics cloud subscription is just $22 a month per user. I'll show you that also. It's so cheaper. For for a big company like Nestle or Eccle Colgate. It's like you know peanuts. It's like peanuts $22 a month. What is it? Nothing. Nothing. For a productive SAP Analytics Cloud subscription, $22 a month is nothing actually. It's just like you know 2,500 rupees. My my car consume more fuel than that in a month. So it's so cheaper. 
how that that cost effectiveness has achieved by enabling multi-tenant environment sharing the resources sharing doesn't mean you'll see you'll not see still that is shared by whom you will never see that okay what is back square mm -hmm. back square is nothing but it's a model created in bw system so you design a back square to create uh, this relationship and create a model it's a query which joins multiple data sources together to uh, to take out some meaningful outcomes we will also learn how to connect a back query and show the data from back query to sac if uh, i i can arrange a bw system then i'll show that next question okay no questions cool so you will see the recording of this video after 3 pm in our training block thank you so much for watching uh, one